Hi, my name is Aaron Linsdow. I'm a polar explorer and professional traveler. Today I'm going to review the La Sportiva Nepal Cube GTX boots. Are these possibly the best light climbing boots out in the market today? Let's find out. The Nepal Cube GTX from La Sportiva. These have been some of the most talked about boots on the market and I'm going to do an initial review of them today for you. But before I do that, if you wouldn't mind, please hit the subscribe button. That helps support my channel. And also please leave me a comment and let me know some ideas for reviews for you. Thank you very much. So these I just bought a couple days ago, brand new. So uh, nicely polished and all that, and I'm going to do a review for so, you. I've been looking for some mountaineering boots to supplant my Barunse double boots. I love these things. I've, I've been minus 20 degrees, but up Mount Elbrus on them. Uh, even just minus 20 standing around, they're warm. Feet were never cold. However, there is no comparison in the size between my Barunse doubles and these cubes. So I'm gonna talk a little bit about that comparison right now. So the reason I bought the cubes over the Evos is that they're substantially lighter, maybe four ounces lighter than the Evos. Now, the reason they're lighter is the sole is much shallower. Uh, there's some other construction things, the rubber on this side, it doesn't have the rubber coating like the Evos do. And, but the mostly the heel is much shorter than the, the Nepal uh, Evos. And that's the reason I went for them is because four ounces on your feet feel like four pounds difference on your back. It's really surprising. Now, these are supposed to be pretty warm. They're not gonna be great to super sub-zero temperatures. I've heard people complaining on the web that, oh, these are too cold because whatever. Well. If you really need a cold weather boot, if I can reach it here, you're going to need a double boot. These boots are not designed, the, the Evos are not designed to replace a double boot. They're great in the place that they can be used in, but just note that the double boot is going to be the ultimate answer if you need them. I definitely wouldn't go up a Denali in these things, although I've seen people, but I don't want cold feet, that's for sure. So let's talk about fit, function, size, and everything else straight away. Now, these boots are really nice because for my feet, you can see my foot here, I've got a pretty wide box, my toe box. In fact, my running shoes here, my A6 Kyanos, I wear a 12 and a half in the extra wide. Now that seems pretty insane, but for me, having a very wide foot means that I end up having to get a ridiculously long shoe. Now, I'm not doing any mountaineering or anything in these, so it's no big deal. But you can see the shoe size here. Actually, the boots are a little bit smaller, but they need to be. So just to give you an idea, these are size 46. There you go, size 46. Now, mountaineering boots do not come in, I would say, American sizes, uh, US men's, it says 12 and a half. So really that matches this shoe. Now, originally I used to wear a 10 and a half shoe, but after I went to Antarctica, skied to the South Pole solo, feels like my foot got wider. I don't know how, but this is the result. So just to give you a comparison, size 46, I could probably wear an 11 and a half. In fact, I think I have an 11 and a half in uh, in my new Kayano, so just to give you an idea of the, the fit range. Uh, when you do get these boots, the most important thing is to do a kick test, get them tightened down, kick. The first slide of your foot should not hit the toe, but the second and third will. If your toe hits on the first kick, that's the old school way, but it's effective. If your toe hits on the first kick, you're gonna get some black and miserable toes. Now for me, I had some boots that were 45s, they were Rossignol BC backcountries. I think they were the X11s and I got the 45s. The toe box is way too tight for me. I did a ski across Yellowstone, minus 45 degrees. Oh boy, that was not enjoyable. So I've definitely had to upsize my boots a little bit. Now, you'll see 
that the sole of these is actually not that big and in fact it's got this interesting cut in here so you can see here I'll do a little pan so you can see that there there you go so I'll also show you that I use a double sock system I have for these boots I use the right sock on the inside and then a regular hiker maybe a heavy hiker smart wool on the outside that sock system has worked well for me in Greenland, Denali, Antarctica, I mean everywhere. So it's a really good system. So I'm going to put this boot on, put my foot in there. And when I put my foot in there, I feel equal pressure all the way around. Even in my heel, which is really nice compared to my Brunces. My, my Brunces, my heel slops around, but the foot's tight. So for a person with extra wide feet, uh, this is really, really comfortable. I feel some pressure, but it's uniform all the way around. It feels like insulation. You'll see on this boot that they have a pull system. They have kind of a funky sideways lace system. It's not that big a deal for me, but they do have lace locks here, which are really nice. So once you get your laces set, you get however tight you want your boot. I initially don't tighten them at all. You actually pull this down you can hear that little click perhaps these lace locks grab your laces so you don't have to get all this snugged up futz around up here and have your shoes go loose however if you do the surgeon's knot that allows you to pull your boot back just a little bit and the way i lace them is i don't do the hand hand mix instead what i do is you take this, lace it here, here, and here, and then there, there, and there, and it's a much faster, less awkward way to lace these boots. Now, because I am wearing them super loose because I'm going uphill, this is all I need, and there you go. So the lace system is very classic. It's got the classic steel style lace joints it does have this big long pull tab on here which i don't know what the purpose of that is uh, you can knot this up here i kind of cross the knot but either way it works pretty well and you can see here it's got an extra joint system in here so when i move my foot you can see how much flexibility there is in the boot so not too bad at all if i'm going downhill I would actually tighten my boot up quite a bit because when I do the kick test, my toe really doesn't even hit. Let's see, so if I kick back here, one, two, I felt the toe hit, three, now it kind of hurts. So for me, the first kick, I don't get any strike, but the second and third I do. And that is about how that works. Okay, so you're gonna see me unlace the boot here. It's a pretty classic system. All right, we'll loosen up the surgeon's knot. Now, the one thing about the locks here is that when you do want to unlace your boot, you can't pull this. You have to get your finger over here and pop the, pop the lace. So that is one detract, but from the minor moment of taking the boot off it's not that big a deal so let me show you the structure of the boot here wait for that to get focused okay and now you'll see here that the leather and the tongue is a complete wrap it doesn't have a separate tongue at all which is really nice which means this will stay much more waterproof so this leather system is completely continuous across the boot which i love compared to say these sort of boots they've got a gore-tex leather sort of tag in there but this one is actually really continuous now gore-tex or uh, la sportivi suggests that you use uh, nix wax leather on there some people like it some people don't so that's uh, up to you but you can see it has got the three classic here. Now, if you're doing something crazy, you can always just lace up two of these and then leave the top lace 
open. You can see inside the boot, you can open this up quite a bit. And it does have a basic, uh, I'm gonna pull it out, just the cheap liner inserts here. Uh, it's already covered in sock hair, that's great. If you want, you can actually put super feet in this boot as well. Uh, you can just take, simply take out the foam footbed that it comes with and then jam a super feet uh, insert in there and that'll add some structure and some extra support. Now note, this boot is not flexible at all and I'm pretty strong. Compare that to these, they have a three quarter shank. The toe comes up, but the rest doesn't. But this is a carbon fiber ridge in here and that's also what makes the boot good and stiff, but ultra light and substantially more expensive. Check the link below to Amazon. But I mean, it's just not flexible at all. So that's a really nice thing. It's got rubber all around the backside. It's got the classic heel clip point and toe clip point for everything there. And you can see it's got a little bit of spongy fabric here. I don't know. You know, is that going to last a super long time? Who knows? I hope so. And it's got a little Gore-Tex tag here for the inner liner. And this is kind of rubbery is here as well. Now this is a nice rough, uh, rough type of leather and the laces feel pretty good. So that's pretty confidence inspiring. Let me show you the close up of all the connection points. There you go. Okay, now uh, I'm, I'm just gonna roll with the regular inserts in here because the boot already is pretty, I would say, snug on me. I don't need the extra volume take up by the super feet, but that is a good trick if you need some extra volume take up based on the width heel structure of this guy is you can put some super feet and I'll put a link below to this as well. Let's say you want to do some hiking, you need an insulated boot, this is what you have, but crampons are too much. The Catahoula Micro Spikes actually fit on here. Now these are size 46s, and my Catahoula Micro Spikes are XL size. Hopefully you can read that there. And I'll show you how they fit on here quite well. Now, and this isn't a Catahoula Micro Spike review, but just to show you, I'll uh, leave a link below to the Micro Spikes. And you get these wrapped around and just showing you the different versatile options that fit on this boot. And it's a little bit snug, but once you put it, pull it on there, the rubber's not pulled too far. So if you just need some extra warmth and in an insulated mountaineering boot, and you want some traction without needing uh, crampons, it actually is very viable. So that is a consideration on these because they're a smaller boot. So we're gonna put this around here. I'm gonna move my cramp on the way so I don't stab my hand. And this is hard to do, not wearing the, the boot. But we'll flip this over, lock that down, lock in the heel here. And there you go, in business with the crampons. Now there are a couple different style crampon designs. One is with the toe, the toe bar and the heel lock. Another design. Now the second design that fits perfectly well on these boots because they're smaller is the plastic or rubber wrap around toe wrap design crampons where you still have this wrap. Now, these are the rubber back heels. They're not recommended for this style boot because they have this bar or the lock back here. So I'm just illustrating this to show you that if you want to buy this style crampon where you've got this, it fits on this boot very well. Now on here, so I wouldn't use these on my La Sportivas because I have crampons with proper bars and such. But the uh, the extended bar on this 
probably is not necessary. The regular length bar will just fit on here. Okay. Now notice one thing when I do lock these down, I'll get this on here. Did I put the right one? Yep. Is there we go. So they lock on very well. This flips over the toe bail fits very well on this boot, but because the heel is so much smaller, there is quite a bit of space in here for the back heel. So there's going to be some ice buildup on the back of these boots. And that's just the way it's going to happen because these crampons have to be designed for a more universal fit. Compare that to the Sportiva Baruncas, that heel completely fills the back here. So that's a, it's not a big deal, but do note that this is a smaller boot and as a consequence, the heel is going to float around there just a little bit. And these are just on my Gravels. There you go. But that's just what gonna, what's going to happen. And I guarantee there'll be a little bit of ice buildup on there. So let me show you what it looks like on the structure there. And the structure here. How the crampon looks on the bottom of the boot and how it looks, oops, let me get the bail on the front there and then directly on the back. Okay. Okay, I'm going to put a single boot on my scale. All right, two pounds, six ounces. So there you go, two pounds, six ounces for the cubes. Compare that to, oh, sorry, should I should do that in grams for my grams, people. One moment. That's uh, one kilo and 88 grams, so 1,088 grams, okay? Now compare that to my double boot. <laughs> Woo, much heavier. My double boots are three pounds, five ounces compared to the two pounds, six. So my, these boots are an entire pound less. So when you're climbing Mount Hood, Baker, Shasta, any of those type of mountains where you can get frostbite potentially on Rainier with these because they're much lighter. Rainier, I'd probably do a double boot unless I was doing a fast trek. But that pound less is less insulation, uh, less less heel, less uh, support, uh, not support, but less structure there. This is a lighter, faster boot. This is meant for the mega slog. This is meant to, hey, I want to get up this mountain quick, or I'm doing some ice climbing in not too cold of conditions. And let me give you some dimensions of this boot here. So this is a size 46 boot, and from toe to heel, it is one foot and a quarter inches. There you go. The width of, let's see if I can do it, this is not that easy. Shorten this up. The width of the toe box is just over four inches. The width of the heel is two and three quarters, give or take. The internal arch area here is pretty small. That's uh, two and three quarters inches. The depth of the heel here from the heel down is, let's see, what does that look like? About seven eighths of an inch. So you can get an idea there. The toe to the bottom of, let's see, let me measure it the other way, is two and three quarters inches. Here you can take a look and you can decide. All right. The whole boot height, let me stretch this out. This boot will come up on you about, uh, come on, just about 10 inches here. So it's about 10 inches high there. And the entry point, if you have super thick calves, you've got about three and a half to four inches to get in there. And then the heel width here, let me turn my tape measure upside down. 
just so you can see there. Okay, good. Now, those are the basic dimensions of this boot. And you can see I've uh, got, um, I'm six foot tall. I have average size hands. So you can see the size of the boot here grabbing it as well. The other feature for the cubes are the additional tongues. So La Sportiva sends you an additional tongue to insert, not uh, this tongue, but this tongue. So if you want, let me not stab myself with this, is you can, let's say the, the width feels fine, but your foot's uh, sliding just a touch, but that's the only way you get the width and you want to push your heel back into the box a bit more, you can actually insert this tongue insert into the boot. It comes with them, it's really nice. And maybe I'll use it on my uh, Baronses, is it's got a venting channel here, but you jam this tongue insert into the boot. This is a little bit awkward. You jam this tongue insert into the boot and it has Velcro here and here, uh, right there, and the Velcro catches inside the boot here and then up in the tongue. And what this does, this fits over your foot and this tongue pushes down just a tiny bit, but it pushes your foot farther and back. It's, it's not needed for me, but you put this tongue insert that the boot comes with inside here and it pushes your foot back. So that is a nice feature that you can add inside your boot. If the fit isn't quite right, you need to jam your heel back a bit, but the width is okay. It does come with this extended tongue feature as well. Let me show you the instructions. And uh, they'll just show you a picture is worth a thousand words, right? So they can do a personalized tongue fit. It's got a little bit of venting, which I don't believe, but there is the tongue fit and what that's supposed to do for your foot. I hope you found this video about the La Sportiva cube boots helpful in your mountaineering ventures. My name is Aaron Linsdow. Please like and comment on the video and subscribe to my channel. Thank you for watching.